Hello, my name is Kene. Uh, most people know me as Tariq. I'm the CEO of 502 Pixels and I'm a professional photographer. What initially drew me into So I had a friend uh, while I was in school. It was sort of a big brother, mentor kind of relationship and he was a photographer. So I guess that sort of gave me a window into the whole world of photography. At the time, of course, I didn't know I was going to ever go into it, but he kind of gave me like an opening into it and somewhere down the line, I decided to take it up as a career. My style of photography is more artsy. Yeah, I like to present people in their most natural form. Uh, and not, of course, what that means is that I don't over edit. I don't try to do too much, you know, to alter what the person actually looks like or what the thing actually looks like. So, but it's more of, it, it takes more of an artsy style. You know, talking about the styling, the editing and everything else. Frankly, um, very few photographers will say this. I actually enjoy shooting weddings. It's very tedious, it's very stressful, but you know, there's something about experiencing the beginning of something and you know, being there to document it. It's beautiful. Yeah, so weddings, that's my favorite. Okay. So my preparation for portrait photography, of course, Preparation starts way before the client arrives. I mean, I think of this, the, the, the concept, and when you're talking about concept, you're talking about things like colors, you know what outfit, what color of outfit the client is wearing, and you know what background would complement it. So things like that, little elements like that. Um, those are part of my preparatory processes, I guess. Wedding photography is one of the most tedious um, photography you'd ever find. So a day shooting a wedding is, first of all, you wake up early, very early. Now in some scenarios, the client you know, pays for a hotel room for the photographer. I mean, that happens a lot, that happens often. So that makes things a lot easier. You don't have to deal with logistics of getting to the hotel on the wedding day. But in situations where that's not the case or such arrangements have not been made, of course you wake up early and um, you load the car with equipment, talking about lights, gear and all that. Probably pull up with one or two assistants, you know, and, um, and we go to the, uh, of course, most photographers will focus on the bride because she's kind of like the star of the day. So you start off the day by, you know, going to her room, She's probably in the process of makeup at that time, and you begin to document, begin to shoot, shoot. And um, the makeup usually takes longer than expected in most cases, in most cases, but it's left for you to, um, you know, try to cover out the time so that you get beautiful shots. So that, that's how the day starts out. I mean, it's a whole day, it's a whole process, but that's pretty much how the day kicks off. So you shoot the bride, then you shoot details talking about accessories, talking about, um, of course, eventually you get to the groom also, and the whole process is pretty much the same thing. I use, um, I use a full frame camera, and um, uh, I use, I have um, three lenses, and they are in you know, particular ranges. So I like to have a portrait lens when I'm shooting a wedding. That's the 85 millimeter Sony lens in my case. Then I have um, a variable focal length lens, and that's the, uh, the Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8. So I love that lens in particular because it's something that you can have on the camera all day, you know, because of course it has a variable focal length, so you're able to zoom in and out. I don't know, maybe I don't want to bore you with the technical stuff, but basically, lenses, camera, lights, and all that. Okay, challenges while shooting. So it depends on the shoot we're talking about. I mean, I shoot portraits, I shoot commercials, 
I shoot weddings, you know, so it's um, a wide range of things. But let me use weddings as an example. So I shot a wedding in December. And of course, um, when I'm shooting a wedding, when I'm taking on a big event like that, I have to hire personnel. Yeah, so uh, I, there was, it was so bad that at some point, I had, I think the social media guy for the event planner was trying to take videos of the bride and groom walking down the aisle. And at the same time, my videographer was trying to take the same video. And of course, the social media guy had a phone and he was always in the way. And the videographer was trying to get him out of the way and they got into a serious scuffle. It almost ended up in like a fight. You know, I just had to pivot and, you know, try to settle the whole thing. So challenges come up in different ways. It could be logistics, it could be equipment malfunctioning, it could be, it could be even forgetting something. Maybe forgetting a memory card or a lens or a light. So it's just left for you to, you know, find a way to get around these things. But challenges come up all the time and you get better at dealing with them with more experience. Okay, so um, I've always been a creative at heart. Yeah, um, I get a lot of inspiration from movies. I'm a movie person, I'm a big movie person, so I get a lot of inspiration from movies. When I'm watching a, when I'm watching a movie screen, I'm not just following the story, I'm not just, you know, watching for action. I also watch for technicalities in terms of composition and different things. So you are watching, let's say you're watching the Titanic, and there's that scene where Jack is at the, in front of the ship with his arms spread out. If you, I mean, that's entertainment, right? But for someone like me, I don't just look at that scene. I look at the composition. I look at where Jack is in the frame. I look at where the mast is in the frame. And all those things are actually curated to look that way. Although, of course, a layman will not be able to tell. So when I see these things in movies and clips, those things inspire me. I'm also inspired by music. And music is a very, very big part of my creative process. Yeah, so um, uh, definitely inspires me. Very, very interesting fact. Clients that actually pay money don't make for the best images. You're probably gonna get your favorite images or your favorite shots from maybe projects that you curate yourselves. And that's when um, collaborations come up. Of course, I try not to do too much of that because people take advantage. But then, when you have an idea, you might not necessarily have uh, a paying client fit into that. So you just want to, you know, have a few collab, maybe a stylist, a makeup artist, and you know, cook up an idea. So I guess uh, my favorite images will probably come from personally created projects. Um, I'm a fan of outdoor photography. I'm a big fan of outdoor, you know, in the wild, in the nature photography, but we don't get to do a whole lot of that in these parts because of, um, you know, possibly running into um, some form of harassment. I mean, I went to do a shoot one time at an abandoned railway and my camera got seized because I don't, I don't even remember the flimsy excuse I was given or the flimsy reason that they gave me for seizing my gear, but you know, of course, you want to avoid that hassle. So, some of my favorite shots are ones that I shot in nature. There's this um, editorial I did one time, and we were able to, you know, put together some very beautiful images, a model in a blue dress, and it was beautiful. Then, um, I love earthy tones. I love brown tones. I love to shoot dark skin models. So I've gotten a, f a couple of very um, beautiful portraits doing those kind of um, pictures. So um, now remember I said my style is, art is artsy. Now because of that, I kind of set up my light in such a way that I have a good blend between highlights and shadows and you know, that mix just combines to give me, you know, my favorite images. I have a few of them. of equipment, oh, it's crazy, I can't, I can't begin to tell you. Um, I was lucky enough to have gotten some gear right before the 
the craziness that's been going on with the um, exchange rates. So, I mean, let me give you a very um, vivid example. I bought a light, the AD600. And as I, when I got it, it was about, um, I bought it for, I think, 245 when I bought it. And the last time I checked, maybe last month or so, it's now about 560. So, like, I dodged a bullet there. But then, of course, you don't get lucky with every gear. You might just, something might come up and you need a different type of gear. And you have to get it at these current prices. So, what happens, of course, is that you have to somehow make up for that in the prices that you give your clients. And you have clients saying that, oh, your services are ridiculously expensive. But it's, it's always a challenge to explain to them how the price of gear is affecting the price that you're charging now and all that. But, I mean, we make it work somehow. We just, we just have to make it work. I did a photo shoot and um, clients posted it and didn't tag me. I mean, I don't, I don't, it's not something I demand of a client. You get, um, of course, when you get a client, you try to build a rapport with the person, you have a relationship with the person because there's always an, a human element to things. So if you are able to build a good enough rapport, it's something that you might be able to reach out to the client and say, you know what, you mentioning me in this post is going to help my business. So, and of course, in most cases, most clients are understanding and they just do it. But if you come across someone that refuses to do it, there's really nothing you can do. Okay, so my advice to upcoming photographers or people that are aspiring to get into the field of photography, just like every other endeavor, the beginning can be rocky. You know, um, you get into this trade. Uh, of course, you don't have clients when you begin at first, so it can be challenging like that. But um, like I said, just like every other endeavor, your persistence and your consistency matters. And always be open to learn. Always be open to learn. Learning never stops. It never stops. You know, I've not, I've not, I don't think, I, I've not even learned half of what I would like to learn, you know, or, you know, as a professional photographer. So I'm always open to learn new stuff. And thanks to the time that we live in now, information is everywhere. YouTube, Instagram, social media and all that. So there's always an avenue to learn something. So provided you're interested, there's always something to learn. So just keep learning, keep growing and keep at it. Yes. My name is Kene, most people know me as Tariq. I'm the CEO of 502 Pixels. I'm an artist, I'm a portrait and wedding photographer out of Lagos, Nigeria. And thank you very much for joining me on this interview with Nigeezy Extreme.